And for our next witness, I yield to Mr. Crane to introduce the witness. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for holding today's hearing on an important topic and for your concern for rural and tribal veterans. I'm glad your staff was able to experience firsthand the incredible Navajo veteran community in Tuba City this past August. I wanna take a minute to welcome President Boo Nigren to the committee today. I visited President Nigren in Window Rock following his inauguration last year. Shortly after I kicked off my time here in Congress and appreciated learning more from him about the unique challenges Navajo veterans face in obtaining healthcare and other critical services. We met with former Navajo Nation Chairman and Code Talker Peter McDonald, and I was grateful to hear his experience. I also joined President Nigren in welcoming VA Secretary McDonough to Tuba City last July. We appreciate the Secretary coming out to my district and meeting with our veterans. For those of you who don't know, I'm proud to represent over half the tribes in Arizona, including the Navajo Nation. My district spans 20,200 square miles of Arizona land. That's larger than nine U.S. states. And the rural and tribal areas I represent do not have reliable access to VA services. Native Americans historically have the highest record of military service per capita and Navajo veterans specifically have a rich history of service to our nation. Navajo patriots serving as code talkers during World War II used traditional tribal languages to send secret messages in battle, a contribution that along with their warrior mentality was essential to our victory. Unfortunately, despite their remarkable impact on our military history and culture, Navajo veterans face many barriers to VA service and care. The VA hospitals in Phoenix and Albuquerque are the only full service medical centers within driving distance to the Navajo Nation. And veterans still face a three to five hour drive to get to those locations. I myself have made the drive from Tuba City to Phoenix, almost four hours of driving, and that's just not feasible for a veteran needing frequent and reliable access to medical care. While several VA outpatient clinics have been established within Navajo Nation lands, these clinics often focus on primary care or less severe mental health issues. This means that many do not have the resources to address severe PTSD, and they may also lack the ability to provide specialty care for chronic pain or diabetes, two of the most common diagnoses among Navajo veterans. If they cannot reach a VA facility that is capable of providing the type of care they need, Navajo veterans suffer. This is unacceptable, and I hope that in this hearing today, we can discuss ways to address this to ensure our tribal veterans can receive the care they need and deserve. I'm looking forward to hearing President Nigren's perspective as he represents the voice of our Navajo veterans who have played an integral role in our military victories throughout history and continue to serve honorably today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Crane and Dr. Nigren, you are recognized for five minutes. Yate, uh, Chairman Bose, Ranking Member Tanako, and members of the committee and our representative Eli Crane, thank you so much. My name is Dr. Boo Nigren. I serve as the president of the Navajo Nation. I come before you today to discuss critical and ongoing issues of access to care and benefits for our veterans all across the Navajo Nation. We have a proud history of military service. As many of you know, Native Americans have a profound and honored legacy with the United States military. Our warriors have served with distinction in every major conflict since World War I. During World War II, the Navajo Code Talkers created an unbreakable code from our Diné language that was instrumental in securing the victory for the Allies in the Pacific Theater. Their valor and courage exemplify patriotism and sacrifices that is a hallmark of our Navajo people. Despite this rich history, Navajo veterans face significant barriers in accessing the care and benefits they have earned. The closest VA medical center, as mentioned earlier, is in Phoenix, Arizona, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and Salt Lake City, Utah. The distances present a formidable obstacle, often requiring veterans to travel many, many hours at great personal expense uh, to, across remote areas just to receive basic services. This burden is compounded by social determinants of health that is disproportionately affects our community, such as high rates of poverty, unemployment, and limited access to transportation. 
telehealth services, which is beneficial or not a cure-all for our veterans. The digital divide is a stark reality on the Navajo Nation where many of our veterans lack adequate internet access or the technology needed to utilize telehealth effectively. The limitation is not just a matter of convenience, but a barrier to essential health care, mental health services, and benefit assistance. The VA's beneficiary travel program is critical, yet it does not fully offset the high cost of the logistical challenges associated with traveling many, many hours to the VA facilities. Furthermore, grant and per diem rates for homelessness veterans do not reflect the higher cost of living in remote areas, which further disadvantage our veterans in need. Access to health care providers is another significant challenge. There is a scarcity of medical professionals in our region, and their shortage means that even basic uh, care can be very hard to come by. Compensation and pension exams, which are crucial for veterans seeking disabilities and benefits, are often delayed or inaccessible due to this lack. The issues I have outlined today represent a larger problem. The lack of adequate VA care on the Navajo Nation is not reflective of the continuous uh, contributions the Navajo people have provided this country. Our veterans have earned the right to accessibility, quality care, and benefits through their service and sacrifice. It is for these reasons I ask Congress to work with my administration to bring a full service VA medical center to the Navajo Nation. This center would provide quality care not only for our Navajo veterans, but most of rural southwestern part of the United States. I'm also asking Congress to appropriate funds to build a VA benefit center in New Mexico side of the nation to help educate our veterans on the benefits that they have earned together through their service. In closing, I urge the committee and Congress to take a, a decisive action to address these critical issues facing our Navajo veterans. We needed increased funding aimed specifically at improving infrastructure and services in rural areas tailored to the unique challenges of, the, of, 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 of our nation and the region. We must bridge the digital divide to ensure telehealth is a viable option for our veterans. It is essential to adjust grant and per diem rates to reflect the true cost of living in remote areas and to expand the beneficiary travel program to alleviate the significant financial burdens our veterans uh, undertake. Our Navajo veterans are honored, have honored their commitments to our nation. We must continue to honor them by bringing services closer to them. And thank you for your time and consideration. Sala <laughs> Eshi John he a ye ho one not ani the no senegishi, and had a drop shin juno an hin zeis in the last so bahas ando les aronle, and ye had a deal in he gives us anigi donal sauce and die nisigi, what o e a ye de go, and juno at the as idols ebe hodo, kitchen ni yaro les not ani the no senegin, kiss li lo, don juno na nishpicate had a dokai, a yen kedini de hodoe, the nebulant an shlon na nishpicate had a shagi, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, doctor.